Hello. Today I'm gonna to be talking about Boreal Chambers and how to run it, like different setups to run it. Uh, first I'll talk about the different tiers, so the T4, T9 and the T16 variant. And at the end I'll I'll talk about, about a bit more generic, generic stuff like Stronghold and then um, like Elder Shaper Influence stuff. And if you don't wanna just watch and listen this to this video. I'll have a written version of this uh, linked in the description and pinned on the comment section. It's just a base pin. Obviously, it doesn't have like the pictures, but it's just a written version of basically what I'm gonna gonna explain to you right now. And yeah, uh, it's in a bit awkward spot because it has two plus one adjacent maps, so. In order to do the the usual where you shape the adjacent higher tier maps away from the drop pool, you have to kill Shaper like the uh, in the Zana's quest line. Uh, so that for a lot of people might take a bit. So I have well I have two different options for those people who just want to get get and start running Pulial Chambers a lot earlier than to wait for the Shaper kill, but uh, yeah, we'll come to that in a bit. So yeah, first of all, in all of the setups where you run the Burial Chambers as a tier 4, you should always uncomplete every other tier 4 map, so that they are like grayed out in your atlas, so that uh, when you're running Burial Chambers, when a T4 drops, it doesn't give you a barrows. Because whenever a map drops, uh, it first chooses the tier, and if it chooses tier 4, and there's 10 different tier 4 maps. I don't think there is actually that many overall, but either way, it chooses the the tier first, and if there's multiple maps in the same tier, then it chooses to some, like, some degree randomly from there. So if you're running Bullion Japers, and you, your crater is not like crayed out in your atlas, it's very easy to see if it's like crayed out or if it's completed. Uh, you'll be able to find craters. So the most important thing, or like the, the absolute most important thing, is to always uncomplete, or you can shape uh, the map into a higher tier. Like you could shape this into a T9, and therefore it doesn't drop as a T4 anymore. But usually people just uncomplete them. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, so yeah. Then the first T4 setup is, well, by shaping and eldering the adjacents away. So for this, you have to complete the Sana's quest line all the way to Shaper, so that you kill Shaper and get the Elder Orb. And then you save Peninsula into like T10 or Elder to T16, and then you do the other 100 Mansion. And now whenever you're running your Burial Chambers, if a like a blue monster or rare monster or the boss were to drop a uh, T5 map, it has to downgrade to T4, assuming that you also removed or unlocked every single T5 from your atlas, so that there is like literally no T5s that can drop, then it has to downgrade, and because the only T4 that you can get is Burial Chambers, it will be a true Burial Chambers. So that's the whole basis for that, and that is Probably gonna be the best way to run it if you only care about just speed running it, doing it like as fast as possible. I can go. But yeah, that is the the way for that. However, like I mentioned, you have to kill Shaper. So in order to get Elder Orb, you have to complete the quest line. So that means that you have to run Elder Influence the seven. 215 and then kill a red elder and then kill Shaper before you get that. There are a lot, of, a lot of people that will take multiple days before they get there. So, uh, I have a, another option which you can literally start doing day one, assuming you can reach your four maps in the first day. And that is literally just never ever complete any other tier four map except Boreal Chambers. And then don't care about T5s. Like literally, you can complete every other map in your atlas, just make sure that you never complete any T4s. Because it's such a low tier map, uh, it doesn't matter as much 
And I've done this multiple times in the past where I have I have the adjacent plus ones, not even shaped away. Uh and I had no trouble sustaining the lower tier map. Now obviously sometimes that might not be enough, but this means you could actually start farming the burial chambers if you want that literally day one or day two, depending on how long it, it takes you to get there. And yeah, simply if if you start running out of maps, what you can do is you can just go and run, for example, these two adjacent maps. You can run the Haunted Mansion. And if you then were to shape the crater into a T9, let's say that you had the quest line done all the way to that, you could then remove the crater from the drop pool, which means that the only T4 from Haunted Mansion would burial chambers. You could also just buy the burial chambers or, well, run any other map. So just running like T6 maps, the T4s that drop are burial chambers. Running T7 maps, T4s that drop will be burial chambers. So you can like also progress your atlas while you're doing this uh, as long as again you don't have any other t4s in your atlas so that's i think probably the best way to do it very early if you want to get you know try to get lucky and get the uh doctor card and uh kickstart your current pool now obviously if you can do the Set up where you elder and shape with the both of the adjacent plus ones. You should do that. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter at all for the low tier maps, like ha like shaping spider layer and uh, ashen wood. I mean, you can only do one. Uh, it doesn't affect your burial chamber sustain at all, so you don't have to worry about the lower tier maps. Also, speaking of the lower tier maps. You can always, when you're running the burial chambers, and you'll be finding a lot of ashen woods and spoiler airs. Uh, what you can do is just do the three to one recipe for them. So if you have, let's say that you have four spoiler maps, you just throw three of them at the vendor. If the vendor gives you barrows instead, because it's like literally 50 50 chance to give one of the uh, adjacent higher tier maps. You simple just change one of the maps uh, on the vendor window and put another one in and then hope that it gives boil chambers. So with just having four different maps, you have three uh, sorry, four different unique combinations. So your odds of getting the burial chambers from the three to one recipe is pretty high that way. And you can increase your sustain through the three to one recipe by also skipping completion on other T3 maps uh, so that only T3 maps that drop are going to be at the adjacent maps which allows you to do the 3 to one because in 3.7 GGG removed the adjacency bonus when they introduced, introduced the, the boss bonus drop so if you have every single tier 3 map completed in your atlas and you're running burial chambers from every other monster except the boss that has the boss the, the bonus drop which only drops adjacent maps the the map the t3 maps that drop are actually evenly spread so you won't be getting like a lot more ashen woods and spider that way so you'd have to just not complete them so that is a really easy way to uh, start running Burial Chambers really early um, in the new league and really not have issues sustaining it. Especially if you... Because you're running Burial Chambers, right? Let's say that you run out again. Uh, you have a bunch of Haunted Mansions and Peninsulas. You just run them, right? Simply, you can just run them. And you'll be finding Burial Chambers because you have no other t force that can drop well except the, the other adjacent and since it's probably locked it has a double chance but that means that out of like what uh three drops you still average one burial chambers so that's still good right and uh by getting more bonus so you should be trying to get the bonus up while you're doing this uh that it means that then the t3 maps 
more often also just upgraded to the T4 drop. Then we have the third option to uh, the uh, tier 4 setup, and that is instead of shaping neither or shaping both, you just shape one of them. So let's say that uh, you absolutely hate Peninsula. So if you get your, I mean, when, once you eventually get your uh, Zana Quest line to a point where you can shape T5 map, you can shape it into a T10. And now when you're doing your burial chambers, assuming Haunted Mansion is your only tier 5, that means that the only T5 that drops from there is the Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion is also a good map because, I mean, it's generally just a decent map. And it's easy to boss rush, so you can just like run straight to the boss really fast, which means you accumulate uh, your uh, master missions, even though they're going to be... Uh, white tier but they are still master missions uh, which you can most likely use the Zana shape or Zana, Zana elder uh, um, map modifiers to bump it up into a higher tier I would guess I'm not sure about that but it would make sense and again if your crater is shaped to a T9 then the only T4 from the haunted mansion would be burial chambers and I'm not sure about what is the chance for the uh, boss bonus drop, but because there's only three adjacent maps that can drop, or potentially only two if you were to shape one of the T6s, then you would increase your chance of getting Burial Chambers. Uh, that's something I want, I want to test this league, is what is the chance for the boss bonus drop to occur, because it only drops adjacent maps. So there's some interesting stuff you can do with that. And if they are like just truly random or if there's waiting for like lower tier map. Because we know that we know that uh the boss bonus drop ignores your Atlas bonus. So I'm guessing that it's just gonna be random between the adjacent. And then for the shape setups, where you shape the burial chambers, and I'd say after you're done one of the options that I just mentioned for a while, when you can shape your burial chambers into a T9, and if you have a build that can do that, I'd say I would recommend doing that because well now you're getting yellow tier master missions, you're getting. Uh, Journeyman sextants that will most likely sell a bit more than the uh, Apprentice and then you just overall just get a bit better loot and more XP too. We're pretty low level at the start of the uh, the league so yeah. So in that case since you have your Burial Chambers shaped into T9 the adjacent maps being you know unshaped doesn't do anything. It doesn't affect your Burial Chambers uh, sustain. What does affect that is having T9 and T10s in your Atlas. So in this case, uh, since in order to be able to shape the Burial Chambers into T9, you have to complete an Elder Influence T9. So let's say that we had Elder, in the Elder Influence here, and you completed Scriptorium, you get the Shaper Orb, and then you shape your Burial Chambers. Now you want to uncomp complete the uh, Scriptorium, with the uh, three sextants and a scouring orb receiver. And make sure that you don't have any other T9s or T10s in your atlas. And that way you'll just start running your burial chambers. And uh, assuming you have a decent bonus. And uh, especially if you're running like Elder Influence or randomly putting some sextants in it. You should be able to sustain it uh, rather easily. Especially if while you're doing this you're slowly also progressing your reds. You could like buy the maps from there or maybe keep the uh, T9 Scriptorium or just wait until you get Burial Chambers because you can just you can just corrupt the Burial Chambers and if it uh, turns into a plus one you will get either Primordial Bull, Dunes or Toxic Silver from it, from the plus one corruption. And if you get if you wait until you have three of those, you can trade them up into Tower of Palace. Or you can just run them, 
hope for the T11 to drop and then uh, skip killing the boss. Obviously, if you like running, running Toxic Super, you can just kill the boss and then accumulate some, uh, them from that way until you get the T11 and then remove. There's a bunch of ways for that. But the basic idea is to just not have any T9s and T10s because it's a decently high tier map now. Sustaining T9s while T10s are dropping is going to be a lot harder, especially early in the league. Uh, eventually, when you have like your whole atlas completed, minus like uh, T9s, it's it's possible to somewhat sustain, especially if you're investing a bit into it using like sextants and uh, sextants and Zana mods and uh, like influence. And uh, it's in a really good spot. It looks like it has it either has five uh, white sextants or then it's. Four plus one yellow, but I'm pretty sure this is further away than any of the others. But yeah, I'd say this is probably. I would recommend using this setup until you have done like progressed your atlas so far that you get the elder orb, and then go back to the four setup where you elder and shape the others, or run t sixteen elder. I mean uh, elder burial chambers too. That's ideally the best strat and. Uh, Speaking of that, if you choose to do that, which eventually once your, once your build is good enough, is gonna yield you the most money, assuming like the luck with the luck with uh, doctors is the same, uh, because of the red tier master missions, which are, it's gonna allow you to get cortex, it allows you to get the uh, the more rare red beast it's just general everything is kind of better in red team maps especially if your clear speed doesn't go down too much which shouldn't be an issue on you know high-end builds so for this all you need to do is make sure that the the 16 guardian maps are not completed in your atlas and make sure that you're investing enough to it. There's a many different ways to do the investing. Either you use a bunch of sextants and a sana mod, uh, wall them. You can use sextants and elder influence, like elder influence, shaper influence, flip flop. That's gonna help a lot. You can also use strongholds, which I do not recommend uh, because uh, master missions the the extra missions that you can do later when you want, they only accumulate when you kill the map boss. And if you're having a stronghold in Burial Chambers, well, you don't want to kill the boss because then the stronghold goes away and then it kind of kills the purpose, right, of running strongholds. Like a stronghold farming the map. And speaking of strongholds, uh, and I guess influence in general. I have couple different, couple different like just give you to give you an idea uh, on how you'd have elder influence and possible positions for uh, strongholds. Uh, I'll explain how to spawn the strongholds in a bit, but I'll explain the setup of it first. So first, you'd have the elder influence at the bottom. So by having it them down here, like uh, Shaper cannot do anything to these maps that are not adjacent to Shaper influence, right? So you'd have a really, really comfy uh, Elder influence here, and uh, because Burial Chambers is connected to four different maps, it means it's going to be extremely easy and consistent to do the Elder and Shaper influence ping pong, as long as you make sure that two of the maps adjacent to it. Uh, our shaper influence, and you can increase the probability of them staying shaper influence by positioning your strongholds uh, in proper spots. Now, in this particular image where I have the elder influence here, the best place for a stronghold is in Barrows, because it's touching both Spider and Peninsula that are connected to Burial Chambers. So if one of these where it turned to, I guess in this case, uh, Spider Lair, 
because there is no Elder Influence connecting here. So let's say that if Peninsula went to go Elder Influence when you complete Burial Chambers, uh, because the only connection be between Peninsula and the main blob is Burial Chambers, when you run the Burial Chambers again, it will lose influence. And then when you then later run it, later, uh, run the Burial Chambers into Elder Influence again, Peninsula will turn into Shaper Influence because Shaper is battling against the Elder Influence whenever possible. But in the case of the Spider returning into Elder Influence, and you have Sulfur Vents also Elder Influence, when you run the Burial Chambers, it will stay. However, because you have a Barrows as a Stronghold, Strongholds can randomly take Elder Influence away and turn it into Shaper Influence, as long as it's not at like the uh, adjacent to the map that you run. So let's say that Burial Chambers and Spider are both Elder Influence. And the only Shaper Influence connecting the Spider Lair is Barrows. If I were to run the Spider Lair, it wouldn't turn into Shaper Influence because for some, I don't know what reason, Strongholds are not considered to be Shaper Influence for the purpose of uh, brute forcing the influence swap. However, they randomly do take them away. So, uh, let's say the Burial Chamber is Elder Influence again. Uh, we run some random ass map somewhere else in our Atlas. Uh, even though Haunted Mansion isn't touching any Elder Influence, uh, sorry, Shaper Influence, except the, the Stronghold, it can turn into Shaper Influence. So that helps keep Peninsula and sp uh, Spider Layer away from the Elder Influence, which is really nice. And obviously, because of the reason that I just explained, you, we can't have Stronghold in Peninsula or Spider Lair or any adjacent map to Burial Chambers because it doesn't help with the ping pong. So that's why, ideally, you place it in a, in a map that touches two of the adjacent maps. But yeah, so ideally, you wouldn't have both of these in Stronghold, just one. And... Uh, in the case you'd have Geod as a stronghold, you would probably have the Elder Influence go up here, and then the Peninsula and Haunted Mansion being the uh, the major, like the main Shaper Influence maps. Then we have another setup down here again. There's some pot potential place of strongholds. This is a good spot for stronghold mainly because it. Uh, means that the Elder doesn't randomly keep going into the, like, too far into here. Not necessary, though. And most of, like, of, more often than not, the fact that you have Geod as a stronghold means that Factory will usually end up being a Shaper influence, and that's gonna eventually take it away. So no matter how far it goes here, it's probably gonna take it away at some point. Basically, this is the same setup with uh, Geod having Stronghold for Haunted Mansion and Peninsula. So again, it's touching two of the maps, keeping them... Uh, keeping them usually away from Elder Influence. There is, a run, there is a very low chance that when you run Burial Chambers, so it's like from Shaper Influence to Elder Influence, that both Peninsula and Haunted Mansion would turn into Elder Influence. It can happen, but it's very rare. So this should work very consistently. Like I'd say, when you like set it up like this, and you have a stronghold here, ignore the uh, these two now. It in in one hundred maps that you run, you probably have to have to run maybe one or two maps that is in Burial Chamber, or that you lose the influence in the two other adjacent maps that are normally elder influence. So it's, it's going to be extremely consistent. And then we have a, a bit of a different setup, which people don't usually recommend. Uh, but on a map like Burial Chambers, which because it's a, such a low tier map, you can also have the influence on the higher tier maps. And you can actually just let Elder spawn. Because when Elder spawns, he and his guardians are usually in the higher tier maps of the influence. So let's say that their influence went all the way to dunes and palace. Most likely Elder would spawn somewhere around here. And it has absolutely 
nothing to do with our boreal chambers here, right? So it doesn't affect us. And the good thing about this is you can actually kill the guardians uh, in hopes of some of the uniques. Especially if you get an actual red elder spawn. So if elder spawns in a tier 11 map, then all the guardian fights will also be red tier. And you can get the red tier, uh, red tier drops. As long as you don't actually kill Elder himself, your influence will stay intact. And uh, as long as you, when you're killing the Guardians, uh, you make sure that the main blob... So let's say that we had a Palace uh, as an Elder, we have Guardians and Dunes, Primordial Bull, Scriptorium and Atoll, for example. As long as you make sure that Elder is always connected to the uh, your main blob of influence that you use to do the ping pong uh, it will stay intact. So in our case right now, if you were to complete Scriptorium where it was the only connection between Elder and the rest of the influence, you would actually lose the rest of the influence. So be careful with that. So a way to avoid that would be having Palace uh, connected to Toxic Sewer, into Mud Geyser, into Sepulture, into Factor, for example. Then you could do it. And then you would have to make sure that you run it back into Influence as soon as possible. Keep it in that. And uh, when Elder eventually despawns from your Atlas, so let's say that you don't do it Guardians, you just like let it let him be. Uh, only the map where Elder and his Guardians are and any random map. Uh, so let's say that you have the uh, the scriptorium set up like the you just had. You have the big portion like the like let's say you have like ten maps here. Then we have the like four maps or five maps here, and then you have like desert spring in Elder Influence. Because when Elder disappears, it cuts the connection between Desert Spring and then the bigger blob. Then Desert Spring will also lose influence. So as long as where, wherever your main blob of influence is, it doesn't matter if Elder despawns, because the bigger portion will still stay. And uh, often Elder spawn is actually just going to strengthen your setup so that Shaper will ne not randomly take away your influence too. So it's, I think overall, letting Elder spawn on a Burial Chambers influence setup, where it's here, is totally fine. And then you potentially get the occasional lucky Red Elder spawn, where you can kill the Guardians in the hopes of some of the uniques. Or just, you know, run Elder influence maps if you want some item, for example. Especially useful in Solo Solo Fun, but not so much in trade. And uh, much like here, uh, much like in the previous setup, the Strongholds are positioned these are like two different options again, potentially here. Uh, if the influence, the main influence would be like here, then uh, this is a good spot because it's touching these two again. Sulfur vents is touching spider lane and ashen wood. So from, it's from, from this exact setup, this is better because it's touching both of them. So it helps keep them uh, out of elder influence. And then if uh, the main blob would be coming from like here, and we'd use Peninsula and Spider Lair as the, the Elder influence, then the Crater is better because Hounded Mansion into Ashen Wood. Obviously, you could have both of them. And yeah, now that we covered like the, the good spots for the Strongholds, basically it's going to be Geod, Crater, Sulfur Vents and Barrows, depending on where your main blob is. And then potential like choke points, you could have it like Arsenal, Overgun Shrine, Atoll, it doesn't matter too much, really, especially if it's in Geod, because Geod is so Geod is uh, connected to Villa and Factory, and both Villa and Factory are like massive choke points for Estuary and Overgrown Shrine, and at all. So, if it takes influence away from here into here, anything that's healed is just like gone. So that's really good. And yeah, let's. Uh, Quickly talk about how to spawn the how to spawn 
a stronghold in a map you want. And for that, I think we're actually gonna be opening this in paint quick. Alrighty then, we have a uh, nice paintwork here. So let's say that we wanted to spawn the stronghold in here. This is the map we want to spawn it on, okay? The, the way to go about that is, first of all, you have to clear eight of the strongholds first. So when you're doing your initial Zana quest line, when you're doing your like random, it starts from a shaped to T2, then you do T3, T4, T5, and then when you do a T6 shaper influenced map, uh, we get the Elder quest line. Well, Elder comes to your map when Sh Shaper is, you know, pitching at you. And then Elder Influence will spawn around the map that you were in. And at that si same point, uh, four strongholds will spawn. Uh, one stronghold in each quadrant of the Atlas. Let's make the red to make it look a bit easier to see. So there's all the quadrants. So you will get one stronghold somewhere in uh, race Corps, base pool lighthouse chateau bone groups etc in the yellow tiers here yellow tiers here here and here and once you complete uh, one of them so let's say that we get a stronghold in phantasmagoria once you complete this the stronghold will move into one of the red tier maps and uh, you have to complete the two, two uh, strongholds in every quadrant. After that, uh, there's a cap of two strongholds that can be in your atlas at any given time, and they will always spawn near your elder influence. Okay, that's impo important. So then, what you'll do is the amount of maps you get into stronghold uh, into elder influence. Uh, isn't exact, but ideally you get like a just massive amount of maps into Elder Influence. You can even spawn Elder, as long as Elder doesn't spawn into the map that you want a stronghold in. Uh, so here we have a good, uh, what, 6, 10, 13 maps in Influence. Okay, and we wanted to spawn the stronghold in, 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 in. That. Okay, so we want to spawn it in Sulfur Vent. Now, because your Elder Influence is here, obviously we don't have Shaper Influence in Sulfur Vent, so it's pretty hard to spawn there. And whenever you're completing maps, the Stronghold might randomly spawn in like Estuary or Villa while you're doing it because it's like trying to battle the Shaper Influence, so whenever that happens, you have to run it away. But when you have at least one missing stronghold in your atlas, what you can do now is, since this, this is all influenced, what you can do is you can run, let's say we run the sulfurments, because that we, we want the stronghold, you run the stronghold, uh, the sulfurments out from the elder influence, and because it had no shaper influence next to it, it will actually just go blank, so this here representing it, it's just like has no influence now. Okay, and as long as there's at least seven maps of Elder Influence in your Atlas, Shaper will basically on the next Atlas stick, so when you run a new, new map, uh, on his influence in any map that is adjacent to Elder Influence, and since Sulfurvents had no influence, it is very likely that Shaper Influence will go there. There's a chance that Elder will just retake the map, but in that case you just run the map again. And when Shaper spawns his in Influence, there's a, there's a small chance of spawning a Stronghold in it. So let's say that we didn't spawn the Stronghold, we just spawned normal Shaper Influence. What you do now is you run it back into Elder Influence, right? 
And now that it's Elder Influence, you run it out of the Influence again. And then now that it's no Influence, uh, you do what you did uh, last time. You run some random map in your Atlas, except Sulfur Vents. If you run Sulfur Vents, that when it has no Influence, it cannot gain Influence. Uh, so you just run some random map. Uh, ideally, you strengthen your Elder Influence, because if Estuary were to randomly take Lookout into Crater, all the way to Ashenwood, so Ashenwood being Shaper Influence, then this didn't would work. You have to have it... Uh, you have to have it uh, surrounded nicely to do this uh, with no issues. So just make sure that you have your Elder Influence nice and safe. And then you repeat this cycle, cycle until you actually spawn the Stronghold in there. And then you can start doing the flip-flop. So basically at this point, since all of this was Influence and now you have the Stronghold here, what you'll do is you'll just basically start uh, moving the influence here, and then you start taking some of the maps away, and then you can start the flip flop. And yeah, I think that was that was uh, pretty much everything. It's a pretty long video, but I explained pretty much everything I can think of about the possible burial chambers, running strats, and even how to do a how to spawn a stronghold in a what you want. So yeah, hopefully this helps. And uh, if you're running Imperial Chambers in uh, 3.8, uh, good luck with the Doctor cards.